Oh, here we go with our first part of review questions for AP Psychology, Biological Psychology. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some practice AP type questions, go through the answers, and just make sure that you've got a good feel for what's going on. Um, you can pause after each question and kind of try to answer it yourself and then uh, follow along and see if you got the same answer as I did. So here we go. Um, number one, an individual experiences brain damage that produces a coma. Which part of the brain was probably damaged? Okay, so key here is we're looking at coma, right? So which one is probably going to do coma? So we look at corpus callosum. Um, as we go through corpus callosum, that is the uh, connector between the left and the right hemisphere. All right, so probably that didn't produce a coma. Reticular formations are arousal. Right, that's our number one thing for arousal. So um, reticular formation is looking really good here. Frontal lobe, probably they would ask a question about your personality if they're talking about your frontal lobe. Cerebellum, that's uh, coordinated movement. That's in the back of your brain, right? It's the, that's the mini brain in the back, back here. And then your limbic system, and that's emotions more or less, right? And so what really uh, makes sense here is the reticular formation uh, arousal. So that's probably what was damaged. There you go. Uh, number two, the section of the brain considered most vital to the initiation of feeding behaviors. Hippocampus, hypothalamus, superior olive, suprachiasmatic nucleus, or the substantia nigra. Um, hippocampus, remember, that's associated with our memory. Right, that's near the limbic system. Hypothalamus is the four F's. Fight, flight, food, and sex. So feeding here, food, hypothalamus is looking good here. Uh, superior olive, uh, that has to do with your hearing, actually. It's not really one that we cover too much in uh, AP Psychology. So if you saw something like that that you didn't understand, probably don't pick the one you don't have any clue about. So definitely don't pick that. Suprachiasmatic nucleus, um, that's actually inside of the hypothalamus and it regulates our 24-hour uh, body rhythm. Um, so since that's inside of the hypothalamus, 24 hours, not going to need that. And the substantia nigra, that's our rewards, addictions. It's also uh, has to do with movement and uh, this little aside is Parkinson's. Parkinson's disease uh, comes with a deterioration of the neurons in the substantia nigra, uh, kind of like um, MS's deterioration in the myelin sheets of your motor neurons. So uh, again, hypothalamus looks like it's the best food, fight, flight, food, sex, right? Moving on, brain plasticity. What's brain plasticity? This is a straightforward knowledge question here. Fill of the healthy human brain tissue, ability of the brain to transfer information from one side of the hemisphere to the other, way a brain gets larger as a child grows, wide variety of functions performed by the human brain, or the ability of the brain tissue to take on new functions. That's this, right? Brain plasticity. If one area of your brain gets damaged, another area can uh, take over and uh, start doing its job. A bundle of fibers that interconnects, interconnects the two brain hemispheres is the association areas. Association areas are usually in the parietal lobe, right? Uh, these definitely don't connect. They're just kind of all over the place. Uh, the thalamus, that one, remember that's our inner room. It's our relay center. Um, your corpus callosum, yep, that sounds like it's it. The one that connects the left to the right hemisphere. Sylvian Fisher, right? If It's the fish, it's the part of your brain that kind of goes down like this, if you're looking this way. Um, separates your frontal lobe up here, your parietal lobes up here, uh, temporal lobe down here, or actually temporal lobe goes more like this, and uh, then your uh, occipital lobe over here. So I guess that would go like that. Cross that out. Um, and so this, this right here is your Sylvian Fisher. Right, that's it crappy looking brain, but uh, bear with me here. Here we, So definitely corpus callosum. Um, oh, the optic chiasm. That's uh, 
actually kind of like the Corpus Callosum. It's it connects. It's actually where your uh, eyes, your eye optic nerves, uh, cross over, right? So if you have a, your brain severed, um, your corpus callosum severed, could do the seizures or whatnot. Your optic chiasm is actually not going to be severed, and you're still going to be able to see like you normally would. And then last but not least, which glands of the endocrine system controls the activity of other glands? So endocrine, right? When we see endocrine, we're thinking hormones. Hormones travel through our blood, pancreas, uh, thyroid, adrenal, pituitary, or pineal. Um, and everybody knows, right? You remember that the pituitary is the master of the universe gland. So most definitely the answer is pituitary. All right, there was uh, five questions to give you a little practice, see if you're uh, up to snuff. So thanks a lot, and uh, watch the next one for more.